All right, let's prove the pumping lemma for regular languages. Here we go. So in order to prove that pumping lemma for regular languages, what we need to do is to look at an arbitrary DFA. So let's just say that this is a DFA right here. And let's say that it has two accept states or maybe more, we don't really care. And here's the start state. Then what we need to realize is that if this has n states in it, then if we feed in a string w1, w2, up to wp, where p is at least n, then that means we will repeat a state. So we repeat a state in the DFA, because if we see at least n characters, we see at least n plus 1 states, and therefore we repeat a state. So let's just say that this is the repeated state. So that means that we go from the start state to this state, and then some number of transitions back to the same state because we repeated it. And then eventually we go to an accept state. And also let's just assume that this is in the language of the machine. So it is an accepted string. So what we can realize is that if we can write this string in terms of its three parts, x, y, and z, so these are the late names of the strings that take me from the start state to the middle state, from the middle state to itself, and from that state to the final state. We'll realize that if we look at the string xz, well, that just involves not going around that loop anymore. So this is also in the language. xyz is in the language also because we that's the original string. But if I do xyyz, that's also in the language because that goes around the loop twice. And we can carry on like this to show that x, y to the i, z is in L for all i at least zero. Okay, now one thing we should also realize is that for the y bit and only the y bit, well, that involves at least one transition because we have a DFA and we see the state twice. And because it's a DFA, each transition must involve a character. So we can immediately deduce from this that the length of y is at least 1 because it can't be 0 since we have a DFA and if it were 0 then that would involve an epsilon transition but a DFA doesn't have any of those. Okay, so then what else can we assume? Well, if we look at that string that we had, w1 up to wp, and let's just say that we take the first n characters out of it. So remember, we have n states, and let's just say we take the first n characters, maybe not, and not the entire string. Well, for the same reason, we can get a repetition in this part. Because if I happen to have exactly n characters, then I would get a repetition anyway. So the, the repetition occurs within the first n characters. Well, what is the repetition part? It's the y string. So that means that x combined with y where y is the first time a state uh, in, in the computation repeats, well, that means that the x and the y part are within the first n characters. So this implies that x, y is at most n characters. So what this tells us is that there is some way to decompose the original string that was in the language and at least the number of states such that the if we repeat the middle piece as many times as we want, we stay in a language, as long as the middle piece has at least one character in it, and the first and the second piece are at most the number of states in the DFA. And that actually proves the pumping lemma for regular languages.